Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the top 10 items that are rising in popularity in New World Database. So we've talked about the top 10 best in slots before, but there are best in slots that are still left out of that video. So today we're going to cover them. If you guys want to learn more about what chestware pieces you should be going for, what jewelry you should be hunting, and what weapons you should be looking for, here in this video we're going to make sure to cover all of them. By the way, if you haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on, and let's get straight into it. So the first piece, you may not think is too, too strong, but you're going to see here it's a medium chest, which makes it viable for light users. And if you are running maybe a bow or a musket, playing OPRs or playing PvE, you're going to have really the best opportunity here with PvP because it does have Resilient on it. It has Physical Aversion, and it has Viger or Vigor. This is going to be very, very good for bow and musket users to start out with, just because, like I said, you do have that resilient, you do have physical aversion against those attacks coming from across the map, as that's usually what you're going to be dying to, and then Vigor as well, or Viger as well, it's going to stop that burn, bleed, poison, and expires that 10% faster, which does happen a lot from other muskets and bows. So this is a decent piece for sure. I wouldn't call it best in slot, but it's definitely Prebus if you are looking for a nice little piece. Next in the line, we do have the Warden's Answer. The Warden's Answer is something you should definitely be looking into as well. It talks about the Vorpal, Penetrating Rapid, rapid Shot, and the Enchanted. And by the way, guys, if you want to see out where these come from or where they're actually you know, started from or location-wise, we're going to cover that here in just a second as well. And I'll actually probably go back after we're talking about Warden's Answer and give you the location on each piece as we go through it. So Dexterity, of course, it's got Cruel on it, Vorpal, Penetrating, or uh, really Penetrating Rapid Shot, and Enchanted, which are three really pretty solid bow perks to have on your weapon. And you can see here, this one, if we go down to the bottom, it talks about Warden of Satit. You can see the location as it loads the map in New Corsica. This is in Brimstone Sands. It's going to be zoomed in. If you zoom in a little bit farther, you can see Warden of Satet, and it's uh, it's got a Satet's key there as well, which is a hatchet that drops with Thwarting Counter, Keen Berserk, and Vicious. So a couple items you could be hunting down here with Warden of Satet if you want to try for those drops. So let's go on back and talk about the Royal Lagoon, because we didn't actually talk about the location here, and that was kind of my fault. Let's go back and see the Lord Sobek. Where is Lord Sobek in Brimstone Sands? Well, he's going to be located right at the water's end or the river's end here in Brimstone. So if you want to jump for that Royal Lagoon chest wraps or even go for the Crown of Sobek, which is also fairly strong for Angry Earthbane or sorry, not Angry Earthbane, but Angry Earth Ward and Genesis in general, you can go for that as well. And then we have the Sobek's Mighty Swipe, which is enchanting, ruinous and trenchant strike. So all three legendaries are going to be from Lord of Sobek like I said, in Brimstone Sands. So let's go over to Scorpio because this is a sword that a lot of people do know about, but I had to throw it in here because we didn't talk about it in our previous video. Scorpio is going to be a huge, huge sword for a lot of sword and shield users to grab. It's going to give you a lot of viability when it comes to trenches, strikes, empowering leaping strike and rogue giving you tons and tons of damage when they turn their back to you. And with trenches, strikes, you know, those fully charged heavies are going to actually deal 29% additional crit damage and it's going to hurt on the other side. So imagine that 29% critical damage with the 18% more backstab damage. It's going to be a lot of damage from behind and it's a really, really good one to hunt down, but it is going to be a little harder to get because it's from Scorpio Supernal. And this is up in the north. You guys know about this boss probably. It does only spawn at night one time per night and it's a hard one to hunt, but at the same time, it's going to be worth it. Scorpio is definitely, like I said, a best in the slot sword for certain combinations. You can also get the Orion Shame, which has refreshing power shot, Vorpal, and mortal power. Let's go back though and take a look at the next one in line. It's going to be Tier of a Set. Tier of a Set does have Dexterity, Health Divine, and Refreshing Evasion, a very, very solid amulet. The cool thing about this tier of a set is it is actually fairly easy to get. It's from Feckit. If you guys don't know where Feckit is, it's going to be straight up in... Let me actually show you guys. Uh, here we go. Let me zoom out. It's in the Ennead. So if you can see the dungeon here, you can see that this is the Fet kit right here uh, in this location in, like I said, the Ennead. There's also a lot of other stuff you can get, of course, from Fet kit. So if you want to try continue to try that that dungeon out there is a lot of benefits to it but tier of a set let me know by the way guys if you have any of these different uh, weapons and gear or jewelry pieces already i'm very curious on what you guys have already hunted down or what you're looking to hunt down next so definitely leave a comment below 
and uh, let me know what you guys are looking for next in line. By the way, if you don't know, we do stream on twitch.tv slash iGraphicEye every single Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern, so make sure to follow me there, twitch.tv slash iGraphicEye. All right, let's jump back over to Invoked by Her Two Lands. This is going to be a very interesting earring jewelry piece with refreshing, refreshing toast, which is definitely needed on every single piece of jewelry when it comes to earrings. Uh, and then it has regenerating as well, which I don't love regenerating, but there are a lot of tanks and a lot of people in general that do like the idea of having that health regen every second. So if you do like this piece, it's something you want to go for. It's dropped by the High Priest of the Twin Doors. This is down, if you don't know, in West Wall. If you guys don't know about the West Wall, it's a elite chess run area in Brimstone Sands. We've done it many times before on stream and on, on YouTube as well. So definitely take advantage of this. If you guys do those, those runs, make sure you're killing the High Priest of the Twin Doors if you want this invoked by her two lands, or if you want Preferring Passage. If you guys look here, Preferring Passage does have infected, keen awareness, and refreshing. So in some cases, it may have viability, but it is dex. So you're typically not going to be running for the preferring passage. You're going to be going for the invoked by her two lands for sure. All right, next up in line, we do have number five. I think it's number six. This might be number six already. We're cruising through this one, and it's got strength, enchanted, refreshing move, and life stealing, which is huge. It's going to be a great sword. Deep Root is massive for a lot of sword and shield users to continually heal themselves up while staying on top of the enemy and reducing your cooldowns. It's going to be a really nice sword to have, and if you want to go for it, it's going to be by the Verulian. I don't know how to say this one, guys. Verulian, the Rootbound. You're going to have to let me know in the comments as well on how to pronounce that one, because that is an interesting name. I do like this weapon quite a bit, but if you want to hunt it down, unfortunately, it's going to be a little bit harder this time around. You're going to have to actually kill, like I said, the Rootbound, and he is in Eternal Pull. There's a lot of different stuff that you can get dropped, though, from this man, Brash Combat, which is a nice great sword from there. Life Spring, Deep Root, like I said, Chef Shirt, Hero, Dominion of the Doomed, Harbinger of Gloom, Extinction and Destiny, as well as Thorn. Just a lot of great stuff. So if you want to take a look at this guy on the New World database, that's going to be a guy that drops a lot of unique things and legendaries that you may want to be hunting for. So let's go over to Protector's Fortune Charm. This one's got for Refreshing, Divine, and Purify which is a decent jewelry piece or a decent amulet piece. However, we are going to be getting this one from Taser Jaw. Taser Jaw is in a weird location, actually. He's right above Everfall in the north, well, very, very northwest. Uh, you can see here Taser Jaw, he's level 53. And which is crazy about this is you can get this, like I said, up to that 590, 600 spot. So it is worth hunting down if you want it. And they also have Heal Strike, which is a pretty solid piece there. It has Antique Battle Axe and Signet of the Swamp as well. So if you guys want to jump over there for the Protector's Fortune Charm, there's other things that can drop for you as well that may make your trip even more worth it. Here we have Sagius Shirt. We have Shirking Fort, Refreshing, and Elemental Aversion. This is a pretty good piece. The only difference is you're not having Resilient, and Resilient is basically mandatory, in my opinion, when it comes down to PvP. So maybe you're using this for PvE, maybe you're using this for certain PvP uh, gameplay, or maybe Arena if you know that they're not running crit, something like that. But realistically, this is not a bad, bad piece. It has Shirking Fort, which is huge, Refreshing, which is huge, and then Elemental Aversion, which can be actually very, very good as well. It's from the High Priestess Eiffel. Eiffel, by the way, is in Tempest Heart. If you guys don't know much about this dungeon, it's a long dungeon, but it is well worth if you're able to get some of these drops. So High Priestess Eiffel, if you guys want to jump and try that one in the Tempest Heart. Next up in line, we have Tough Times. Tough Times is a nice great sword, 29 dexterity. Obviously, that rises as you rise the great sword, uh, the gear score for the great sword. But we have Thwarting Strikes, Keen, and Refreshing Move. I don't love Keen right now, however, Refreshing Move plus Thwarting Strikes makes this a very viable great sword. If you take a look at where it's dropped, it's by three different people, Angry Earthwise. You can see Tax Odious, Taxi, and of course Otis. These are all Angry Earth mobs within the Garden of Genesis. So if we go back, you can see Taxi, Taxodius, and let's see the last one, Otis, all, like I said, in Garden of Genesis. So run Garden of Genesis if you're looking for this great sword right here, Tough Times, as it is one of the best out there, and it's a very, very easy drop to get because Garden of Genesis, one of the easiest dungeons of the game. So take advantage if you are looking for this great sword. Shouldn't be too hard. Find a group, run it up, see how it goes. All right, next up we have Infernus. Infernus is going to be a Strength Con sword. We have talked about a lot of swords today in this in this video, which is nice because 
Swords are coming very, very heavily into the meta. If you guys didn't notice, Sword and Shield is huge right now in PvP. And, of course, PvE, typically you're going to have a Sword and Shield user. You have Refreshing Move, Enchanted, and life stealing, making this a very viable sword for PvP, as well as a few other things. Um, but in Furnace, like I said, a very, very solid sword. If you want to look for it, it's going to be by the Disciple of Disorder that it is dropped. And this is, by the way, all the way up in the top of Shattered Mountain. Disciple of Disorder can drop it, and there's a lot of other drops as well. So Spirit Path, and uh, you, like I said, Infernus is the good one, but there's a lot of others, and you can take a look at Disciple of Disorder on New World Database or nwdb.info if you want to take a look more into what this guy can all, can all really drop for you. All right, Champion's Amulet is, of course, the last one. I know this is number 11. We only said 10 in this video, but this is an important one because Champion's Amulet is something I've been hunting down on my stream for so, so long. We're on PvP track 87, and you get this, by the way, from PvP tracks. So typically, people in my stream will pop in and say, oh, I got it at level 13, 15, 20, 25, something like that. You never hear much above that 30, 40 range. I'm at 87 track PvP track, and I have not gotten this Champion's Amulet. It is a best-in-slot PvP amulet for many many people and i cannot seem to get it but it has health stamina recovery and shirking and power um but like i said this one's a very very good one to go for and uh, definitely grab it on your pvp track if you do get the drop uh but thank you guys again for tuning in i just want to say like i said on the stream we're continually grinding for this champion's amulet so if you want to see more gameplay regarding around mage or pvp in general or even pve you're going to find me on twitch.tv slash iGraphicGuy. Make sure to like the video as well, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. I'll see you guys all in the next one.